What's up, guys? Welcome to some Hip Hughes history. You got a few minutes because I'd like to teach you a Supreme Court case that's going to be on the test or it's going to be on Jeopardy. Either way, you should know it. It is Korematsu versus United States. And I say it with a little bit of a Japanese accent, not to poke fun, but to get to the critical concept that we're dealing with Japanese Americans and their internment on the West Coast. On December 7th of 1941, we all know that Japan attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. And this kind of brings the United States into World War II. Well, at the turn of the calendar in 1942, FDR is kind of nervous. He's nervous about um, not just Japanese, but Japanese Americans, and predominantly worried about spies on the West Coast. So FDR, here's your vocab, um, does Executive Order 9066 and this executive order is basically an internment order that we're going to round up Japanese Americans on the West Coast, Washington, Oregon, California, and we're going to put them in internment camps, mainly in Arizona, Nevada, and the deserts out there, um, to keep them locked away under key so we don't have to worry about um, any spies or any internal attacks. So Fred Korematsu, that's his name. Yes, I said it, Frederick. And I think that that shows the kind of the glaring hypocrisy of this case. He's an American named Fred, um, who has Japanese ancestry. That's why his name is Korematsu. Uh, San Le uh, Leandro, California, is where he was from. And the specific um, order that he is going to violate is Civilian Exclusion Order Number 34, which falls under Executive, you know, um, Order 9066. Well, this is basically the order for his town to evacuate, and Fred's not going to do it. Fred's going to hang out and say that this is not constitutional, that he didn't do anything wrong, that his habeas corpus Fifth Amendment due process rights are being violated. So he gets arrested, he gets convicted and shipped off to the internment camp, and now we have our court case, Korematsu versus United States. And uh, Korematsu is going to lose. Um, it was a 6-3 court decision. The majority decision was written by Hugo Black, and even though we're going to find out in a minute that this case is going to be pulled apart later, and that his conviction is going to be overturned. Um, this is a very important decision because it's, it's only one of a few examples where the court is going to use the strict scrutiny test. And that's the language we use when we're having laws that have some type of racial discrimination in them. And it's going to pass the strict scrutiny test, um, therefore allowing for the segregation and for unequal treatment of just Japanese American citizens. I love Frank Murphy. Frank Murphy was one of the dissenters who just called it out. He's like, you are so racist. I believe he said that the decision represented the ugly abyss of racism. And he compared what we were doing to Korematsu and to the Japanese Americans, um, no different than kind of what the Germans were doing to their minority populations, kind of, you know, the idea that we're fighting against tyrants and we are doing tyranny in the United States. And I know that many African Americans are screaming Jim Crow at the computer screen right now. Um, but definitely, uh, you know, we're not doing it to German Americans. We're not doing it to Italian Americans. It's reserved for Japanese Americans. So Korematsu is interned. What's interesting is later down the road, um, we're not going to find out to the 1970s and the 1980s, but the Solicitor General, the guy who runs the case for the United States, a guy by the name of Charles Fahey, had purposefully withheld evidence from the court. Um, he suppressed um, reports from the Office of Naval Intelligence that showed that there was no fear in the intelligence community that there were Japanese American spies roaming about. And because the court that made that a original decision, the original district court, had faulty information, um, Korematsu was going to file something called a Karam Nobius. It's Latin for basically reversing a mistake. And in 1983, the court finds that because the district court didn't have all the information, that the conviction was overturned. But the actual decision has never been overturned. Um, the Attorney General in 2011 um, did put an official order out saying because of the hanky-panky that went on that this decision could never be used as a precedent. The court can't use Korematsu to intern more American citizens. So this probably goes down top three, top four worst decisions the court's ever made. But now you know, when you're writing about this court case, you want to argue that not only is it limiting civil liberties and expanding executive authority during war and crisis, it's kind of a thread that runs through American history, whether you're talking about um, Lincoln or FDR or George Bush or even Obama. I think that you also want to nail racism and nativism. Nativism is a word that pops up on the exam all the time, right? Nativism, I'm from here and you're not. And if you're Japanese-Americans, you're certainly not from here. 
So we treat those people differently because of nativism, anti-immigration, xenophobia. The vocab words are coming out my brains, guys. Um, one more interesting fact, in 1988, um, Congress passed the Civil Liberties Act, signed by Ronald Reagan, which allocated $1.6 billion in reparations for victims of the internment camps. Each uh, victim, I believe, got $20,000. So there it is, Korematsu versus United States. Uh, hopefully you learned something, your brain's a little bit bigger, where attention goes, energy flows guys if you haven't subscribed click my face because every time you subscribe you save a pony don't you want to save a pony we'll see you next time is when i do some teaching on the youtubes